In part one, we looked at my 1973 Burroughs C6202 calculator, or more specifically, at the Shinsu Saiki EP102 printer, which had a stripped gear. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. This time out, we'll hopefully get the printer back working again. So here goes. Right, my new gears have arrived, so it's time to take the side frame off the gearbox and extract the damaged gear. There's a spring for the ribbon colour changing lever to come off here, and three screws on the side frame itself. OK, that's off. There were shims between the side frame and the mounting post on two of the three screws. I'll assume those were correctly positioned and replace them in the same positions for reassembly. And there's a C-clip holding the offending gear in place, so I'll remove that off-camera to save the inevitable hassle of it flying off somewhere in the room never to be seen again. OK, inevitable C-clip disaster averted, and we now have the damaged gear off and ready to replicate. There's a washer between the gear and the C-clip, so I'll put that to one side so I don't lose it. The spindle on the side plate measures a shade under 3mm diameter, and the gears I've got have a 4mm bore on the large one, and a 2mm bore on the small one, so I need to open the small one out and make some sort of sleeve to bring them down to 3mm. So I'll head off into the workshop and return in a bit once I have something to show. After a little hunting, I found this bit of brass tube that just happens to have an outside diameter of 4mm, which is a lovely snug fit in the bigger gear, and an inside diameter of 3mm, which fits rather nicely on the spindle of the side frame. So all I have to do now is open out the smaller gear to a 4mm bore. I don't think I've got much hope of putting the gear in the lathe without damaging it, so I've stuck it down to a block of wood to keep it square, and I'll try drilling it out a little bit at a time to see if that works. There's a little risk that it could drift off centre, or the drill could catch and tear the gear off the wood, but we'll have to deal with that if it happens. So here goes with the 2.5mm drill. and again with a 3mm drill. OK, that was a crap idea. Even after the second drilling, the hole had clearly drifted off centre and would have only got worse if I'd have carried on. We do have a big old lathe, but it would be no good trying to grip a tiny plastic gear like that. A small model engineer's lathe would do the trick, but we haven't got one of those. Thankfully, my brother came up with a good solution and made me this centering tool. It has a 4mm hole all the way through and a 7.5mm recess to hold the gear snugly. So I can simply place the gear in the recess. It's a pretty snug fit, but to make sure it stays put, I'll stick the whole lot down onto a block of wood before drilling. I'm going to drill it out carefully by hand, and with a bit of luck, it'll fix the off-centre 3mm hole as it opens it out to the final 4mm bore. I did order spares of each gear, but I'd rather save this one if I can. I'll go slowly, stopping to pull out the swarf from time to time. And bingo! We have the small gear running nice and true on the brass tube and I can slide the bigger gear up to it, so you get the idea of what the final product will look like. All I've got to do now is figure out what glue I'm going to use, glue the gears onto the tube, trim the tube to the length, and deburr the ends. And here we have the finished gear, complete with timing marks. I'm not convinced that gluing this Delrin gear material will work. I've gone with epoxy, but I'm not convinced it will last. If it fails, I might try adding a very fine keyway of sorts to bind the gears to the brass tube. I think the smaller one will be fine anyway. It's a pretty tight friction fit, but only time will tell. So now to reassemble the printer and give it a try. 
OK, that's the gearbox reassembled and the printer hooked up to the calculator. Be aware that there are mains voltages exposed when the case of the calculator is open, so don't meddle if you're not sure what you're doing. I've aligned all the gears to their timing marks, but as I suspect the printer has been tampered with in the past, I'm expecting the characters to be out of line with the hammers. But I can see that the number drum is fastened to its shaft with two hex screws, and I'm hoping to be able to correct any alignment issues that way, if required. I just need to connect up a couple more wires that go to the cover. I'll have to rest that loosely in place for the moment, and then we're ready to go. So I'll turn on and wait for the calculator to spin up, then add a single number and see how the alignment looks. I'll try number one, and press plus. Hmm. I can hear the tiny solenoids firing, but clearly not at the correct time. Obviously, an alignment issue seems like the most likely cause of the fault, but it's not impossible that there's an intermittent problem with the electronics as well. Ah well, back to the drawing board. Right, after much wasted time, the calculator is back working. I've been juggling the gears to adjust the relationship between the motor shaft sensor and the drum sensor. At one point I was getting totally illogical printouts where all the digits were trying to print, which looks more like a problem with the circuit boards rather than the printer. But then I noticed due to the printer wires coming out of the back, the case wasn't sitting correctly, and might have been pressing the percent key, causing unexpected amounts of digits to print so I'd probably spent a couple of hours chasing a problem that wasn't there. Or at least it wasn't there once I'd fixed the initial gear misalignment from the first test. Anyway, it seems to be working for now. The timings I ended up with are more or less as the marks, with the motor shaft sitting with the sensor halfway between the two magnets, and the magnet on the drum more or less dead centre on its sensor. And that appears to be working. So just to show it's working, here's the fairly standard test of 1, 2, 3, plus 4, 5, 6, plus 7, 8, 9, plus 9, 8, 7, plus 6, 5, 4, plus 3, 2, 1, which, all being well, should give us the result of 3, 3, 3, 0. And indeed it does. Oh yeah, and I nearly forgot. The gears I fitted are both 0.4 module, the smaller one is 17 teeth, and the larger one is 68 teeth. They're both 3mm thick, which adds up to slightly less than the original 7.2mm, so I made my brass insert the correct length to reduce end float. I'll put details of the gears down in the description. That will do for this video. I'll clean up the case and put the machine back together, and assuming it still works, I'll do a full demonstration sometime soon. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video, and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.